Hi, everybody, and welcome to our webinar from uh, Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal Ireland. And this week, we are talking to Wayne Lloyd. Uh, welcome, Wayne. Hello. And hello. Wayne hello. is the... Have you taken up your... You're the new president of the Hairdressing Council of Ireland. I'm not sure if you're... Are you in the position yet, or is it incoming? I'm getting there. It, it officially starts on the 1st of January, but it feels like it started already. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's your, your, you were the vice president, so you're the incoming president, and then also, Correct. of course, you have your own here in Cork. And we decided we had spoken, we'd spoken to you before, uh, before the last um, reopening, which was, we were heading towards the 29th of June, I think it was. So we decided to chat to you this time around, preparing for the post lockdown surge along with the pre Christmas rush in December, because I think we all know that like December is going to be fairly hectic for salons. Now I know you wanted to, to address the reopening date before we go any further. Yeah, if I could, first of all, thanks for having me, Karina, and thanks for professional beauty in uh, HJ Ireland and everything. Uh, it's great to be back again. Um, so, guys, we, we seem to have some confusion as to the opening date for hairdressing salons across the country. Our tea shop, Michael Martin, uh, when he gave his speech initially, announced it as the 1st of December. And there's a lot of press going around with it as the 1st of December. The cabinet has it on their website as the 2nd of December. And there seems to be, from what I'm picking up, um, a, a kind of a, a, a bit of a difference of opinion across the board. So basically what we're doing about it is the council looking into it. We've, we've, we've um, emailed and contacted ministers. Uh, Damien English ministers come back to us and said it's the first. And so that there is a bit of a contradiction. What I would say about it is don't panic. Um, we will come back to you through a social media and through professional beauty and the council and give you the correct date. However, um, on a personal level, I'm fully booked on the first. <laughs> so, uh, and I think salons across Ireland um, are, some are opening on the first, some are opening on the second. Um, off the record, I think it, people will just open their salons when they're going to open their salons. And that's, I think it's, you know, um, I'm a bit disappointed in the government guidance because to have that, inaccuracy at this point it is is awful really so i just wanted to put people's mind at rest that is actually happening so uh, if people are saying oh have i got this wrong no there is a confusion um and it's come from government and the i know that the other hairdressing bodies we're in touch with the other hairdressing bodies and we're trying to get clarification for you all but just to let you know that at the moment as it stands i'm in the same boat i'm fully booked on the first and, and, and I'm probably not going to change that. I'll see what, see what happens. But my advice would be not to worry about it. Um, let's get everything else sorted and uh, see where we go from there. I think a lot of salons will probably just go ahead and open on the first um, uh, because they, they're, they're, they have to, they're booked and they, they won't be able to reschedule their clients. So that's that. Uh, and it's quite simple. Okay. There's nothing we can do about it. It's out of our control. But we, you know, I think what I, what I actually think will happen was people will just open on the first or the second whenever they've booked their clients from. Whatever they were, they were gearing towards anyway. Okay. And then just, um, I suppose we'll go back to, I know that the last time around we went through uh, a sort of a checklist that people should have in place before reopening day. And now I know if we can go through what you think are the most important things, they're probably not quite the same as the last time around because the last time around people were sort of reopening in a whole a new normal, whereas now they've been there, yeah. done that, and that's kind of a little bit different. So what would be the main things? Well, let's face it, guys. We, we did an awesome job last time. Uh, Corinne and myself were just saying there were no recorded cases from salons, that, which means we're incredible. Um, it means be very proud to be part of an industry that worked so hard on the hygiene levels and we work with NEFIT and all the other government agencies. Um, so so we've, we've pretty much got it nailed. What I would say is I took some PR advice yesterday and you need to get your staff to do a return to work form like you did last time, saying that they have no symptoms. Um, you'll have the form from last time 
Um, if not, uh, I think there's there's information on the council page, but basically they just have to sign something to say that they don't currently have COVID or any symptoms of COVID or their sister has COVID and they're waiting on a test or anything. Um, I would get them to do that ASAP. So maybe a Zoom meeting this week and just and just, you know, do it, do it online or whatever. And then it's the same with clients coming into the salon before when we were having clients come in, they were having to sign a form to say basically the same thing. Again, that hasn't gone out the window. PPE hasn't changed. Sterilization hasn't changed. Contact tracing hasn't changed. It's all the same as before. But remember, you do when with your staff coming back, you do have to retick that box because they've been off for another couple of weeks. Again, it was six weeks we'll be off, is it? I can't remember now. Um, they've been off for six weeks and we, we have to just tick that box to make sure that they're not waiting on a test or um, have been contact traced or anything. Because if they have, you can't have them in the salon until that's cleared up. Okay, that's so good my advice, question. what I've done with my team is I've had a Zoom this week and asked them all the question. And uh, when I see them, I'll take the form. Um, but you can do it verbally and if anything changes they have to tell you it's a good idea to kind of get that done now even if you have to call your, your, your staff and ask them over the phone and then they can fill in the form when they when you actually come into work or you can meet them in the salon um, or meet them and get them to do the form post them out to them whatever but that needs to be done before you start work okay and then is there anything salons should be doing like right now in terms of, I suppose, the actual salon space? Like, I think I saw somewhere that like people were being advised to make sure their, their taps were still running okay. Now I know we haven't had, well, we have had atrocious weather, but we haven't had, <laughs> I don't think anyone's pipes are going to be frozen or anything like that, but you yeah. know, just little things like that, like checking electricity and stuff, you know, when there was no one in the salon probably for a couple of weeks. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys have been into your salons and uh, uh, sterilizing them for reopening, probably been in there booking appointments and things. Um, run the water because of Legionella. Legionella, if the water is sat there, uh, it can uh, have uh, Legionella in the water. It shouldn't be such a big issue as last time because we weren't closed for so long. Um, I think people have probably been in like me and been putting up Christmas trees and making the salons look nice and things like that. A little tip with that is we kept, kept our Christmas decorations to the windows. We didn't put them on the mirrors and things like that because of sterilizing. Um, and if okay. you put all Christmas decks around the mirror, it's going to be harder to sterilize. So that's just a tip if it's not too late for people. We just kept it to the windows um, and, and made it quite clear that, you know, we, we made our windows look lovely, made it clear that the salon was very Christmassy and had a nice warm feeling to it but we put up less decorations around the mirrors and basins and chairs and, and in the actual salon part, because we're gonna still be sterilizing to a, a, a supremely high level. Um, but yeah, I would check your electric, make sure it's all working, check your phone lines. I know that I had problems before because air cut me off because my direct debit didn't go out. That was last time. Um, this time all my, all, my, all my phones are working. Um, my internet's working, just things like that. And then to be going into the salon and uh, rebooking your client. So what we did is we, and it's still not too late if you haven't done this, uh, we didn't do a waiting list because we felt last time uh, it was such a long time and we didn't have a date. So the waiting list proved to be quite hard work and we missed people off it and, and things like that. So what we did is we put, we went into the salon twice a week on a Wednesday and a Sunday. And the reason we chose a Sunday is because a lot of people don't work on a Sunday. So if you're trying to contact people during the week, they're possibly at work and can't, can't, you can't get through to them to reschedule. So we rescheduled all of the last bit of October and all of November, we rescheduled into December and we put on Facebook and social media that we would be in the salon, for example, on a Wednesday and a Sunday from 11 till seven, if you want to uh, change your appointment or make an appointment. Um, and then obviously we've had to uh, extend our opening hours. So what we've done, and I can only talk about what we've done, different people are doing different things. Some people are working longer hours. Some people are 
uh, we're open from for 24 days solid. We, we were opening Sundays and running the whole way through. Um, what okay. I would say about that is contact your HR uh, person or whatever. You, you can't force your staff to uh, to work extra time and you know more hours and things like that. It has to be a negotiation, um, but it has to be for the needs of the salon. Uh, so if you're in, in doubt about anything like that, you can contact places such as um, the HR suite or Peninsula or, 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 or your, your solicitor for the contracts for the staff and just check what you've got in place there. Because um, you, you've obviously you, the staff, you want your staff to help, but you also want to make sure that you're kind of legally compliant. You know, you, there, you, there are rules around... Um, I know that some salons were working up until midnight and there are rules about breaks in between work days and things. So you just have to be mindful um, that you're not breaking any of those. Um, but the reality is, I think everybody is going to have to pull together as a team and get the work done. We've got 12 weeks worth of clients to fit into it because we had six weeks then our four weeks, so that's 10. And then the, there's a couple more weeks that, that, of clients that haven't even got appointments yet. You know, those ones that phone up two weeks into December and still want a full head of highlights and a cut and blow dry, they're still coming. Yeah, yeah. Because I guess, like, that's what I was going to say, you know, about the best way. And I know it's, it's kind of a whole, it's a minefield, really, like the best way to manage appointments. Because even if the salons have booked them in already, you know, to the tips to manage things smoothly. I suppose I was thinking more around like, you know, the way you've got like, say, the people that are coming in, say the ones that are, that are booked in for the 2nd of December, say, somebody's getting yeah. their hair done. But like, that, that's not going to do them for their Christmas hair. They're going to want another appointment. Do you know what I mean? It's like, how do you manage? Have you kept, are you booked up solid for the first week? And then have you left gaps? Or what way do you work that? Well, I'll be, I'll be honest with you, we're booked up solid for quite a bit of it, but organically, there are still some gaps. Um, and I think that's because there's a, people are leaving their appointments, so if salons have still got gaps, if you're fully booked the whole of Christmas, well done. Uh, I'm not, um, so we do still have some gaps. But it's just about, um, I, I guess you just have to be mindful that like people made their Christmas appointments and from August in our salon, we were advising people to make the Christmas appointment mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe at the beginning of December, then their Christmas Eve blow dry and whatever. But I guess we have to be realistic. Um, hairdresser making appointments front of house, I think is the hardest job in any salon. And I think it's the, it's the most thankless task as well. Because sometimes, no matter what you do, you can't please a client. I'm yeah, getting, they're, at the, they're at the cold face of the... Uh, it's, 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 it's reality. So I'm getting emails from clients going, I'd yeah. like a full head of highlights and a cut and blow dry with you the Saturday before Christmas. And obviously that's not going to happen. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm e emailing them back saying, you need to give me some options um, to work with. Obviously, it's a very busy time. Um, what I would say here is... Um, how you manage that is down to your own discretion. We can't, as, as hairdressers, keep everyone happy. Obviously, it's our goal to. Our customer yeah. service is, is, is excellent. But we, I think if I'm really honest, there are some people that, that you know, that are going, you are going to get the unreasonable client that wants to, that phones with one appointment in mind. And if she can't get that, she's going to kick off. But that's reality. That's you're always going to get that, and I think we just have to accept that's part of the game and not get too upset about it. Um, uh, you know, and we, we've just explained to them what you've done. I, we, you know, we've pulled in more staff. We've got extra hours worked. We're working longer days. We're personally not working longer days. We decided to open uh, seven days a week because that's what, in consultation with my team. That's what they wanted to do. So we, we decided that would work for the salon. Uh, they didn't want to work later nights than we already do because it's dark now and it's a bit depressing. Um, but it, it, it's about working out what's best for your salon. And I know a lot of guys will already have done stuff, 
but you it's not it, it's not set in stone you can make changes so if if by the first week in december you realize it's not working then maybe open a sunday or you know maybe add a couple of hours onto the working day have a consultation with your staff uh, and, and and make changes just because you've set it now doesn't mean that it's set in stone and you can't adjust it a little bit if it's not working. So if you're finding that, oh, hang on a minute, I, I need to get a few more people in, you know, my regulars that some of them have been missed off, then make some adjustments. Um, but just make sure you chat to your staff about it and keep them included in the consultation process so they know what's going on. Don't just say you're working an extra two hours here. Um, just because you, you know you, you'll get you'll get better buy-in from the staff if you make sure that um, they understand what's going on. I don't know if we've lost Karina there because it looks uh, but I'm going to carry on anyway. So that's really important. Um, I think people's stress around appointments, both clients and staff, is palpable. Uh, like at the moment, it, it, it's huge. I know that hairdressers are worrying about going back to work and um, how that's going to be. I know hairdressers are worrying about the amount of clients they're going to have to deal with. And I know clients- Sorry, are... wait, I, I, lo I, I, got, I think I got disconnected or something there. Did you know I was gone? I think you did. I kept talking, so I don't know okay. if I'll work or not. I just kept yep. talking. So okay. basically what I was saying is there's going to be a lot of stress around appointments, both from the, the staff and the manager side, obviously the owner, needs to get the money in because let's face it Christmas gets us through January and February that's standard everybody knows yeah. that and um, I know there's there's rumors about lockdowns in January and February my advice with that with that be let's do what we can do today rather than focus on what what might or might not happen in the future so <clears throat> stress around appointments you can only do what you can do and so if you've planned your appointment system well, if you've booked in extra days, if, you, if you've got um, a kind of a plan B in place, for example, um, if I've got clients that I've missed and they're my regular clients and I can't let them down, I'm prepared to come in for four hours on a Sunday to do those clients. Have a plan B, um, you know, have something there that, you know, if it has, if you if you've made a bit of a mess of it and forgotten people, that you can get them in, because the the last thing you want to do is upset your clients. Now that being said, we're human. We can only do what we can do, and yeah. unfortunately, the reality is we may possibly upset some clients. Um, <laughs> they're not necessarily going to be uh, reasonable at the moment. What I would say, though, is you just need to mind yours and your staff's mental health around it. Because this is a really stressful time, um, when people are phoning for their appointments or, or, or things like that, you have to remember that the client is probably suffering from stress as well. COVID stress is a huge thing. Um, I know that yeah. we spoke about this last time. I think it's been worse in this lockdown. I think because the nights are darker, we can't go out for a walk that, you know, it's, it's kind of a, it's raining all the time. This lockdown, even though it's shorter for me, has been a lot harder. Um, and I think yeah. that's the general consensus for, for people in general. So when our clients are moaning that they can't get appointments and when our staff are stressed because they're too busy and whatever, just remember that it's probably not just it's not just a, a, a simple thing. There's, there's COVID stress going on as well. So they're not just being, you know, arsy because they can't get the correct appointment. They are actually stressed in general. So it might come across badly. And yourself as well as a, a, as a stylist or whatever, remember that you, your um, approach to your client and how you react, uh, you, you, you can end up being, I found myself being a little bit snappier with my partner and the people in my life. And it's because of the, the, the kind of, sorry, that's my dog barking there. Uh, that's because um, I probably got a delivery outside or something, but that's, uh, it, it's, it, it's a reality because we are more stressed and the slight the smallest little things that we're trying to do are difficult. Yeah. 
And I suppose like the, the reopening this time round as well is different from the last time because the last time there was a sense that like we were reopening for good. Whereas yeah. this time there's a bit, there's that fear of we're only actually going to be reopening for four weeks and then they're going to make us close again. And it's like the, the, the need to make as much money as possible. And it's like trying to manage all that without like suffering mentally as well. Well, let's face it, guys, if we're really honest, I mean, as a businessman now, um, January and February are our worst months. They're not good months. So if we, if we were to lock down, and remember, that's only a rumour at the moment, and I don't like to base, you know, stuff on a rumour, but if we were to lock down, that's not necessarily the worst time for business to lock down and people to be on mm -hmm. the pandemic unemployment payment because businesses don't make profit in January, February. Um, it's standard for about the first 15, 16 weeks of the year, we either run at a loss or make us or break even. Um, and that's why Christmas is so important. So I wouldn't worry too much about January, and February. In some cases, the way the industry is at the moment, a lockdown could do us a favor. Um, Cause you know, we are, we are down on our, on our takings, we don't have all our clients back, and maybe a lockdown in January and February could do some some salons a favour because it would just give them that breathing space where that rather than sit around waiting for clients to come in. Yeah, and sorry, just to go back to there about um, the you know the managing the 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 sort of the very busy that it's going to be very busy. In terms of, I know you said you your salon decided that you were going to just open every day and work the regular hours. And so do you think that it's up to each salon, like, you know, the way some of them, they might open extended hours and do like, because of the spacing issues with social distancing and stuff, is it okay if people do like uh, the rotating shifts and things like that? Of course it is. Let's clear that up. The two meter rule doesn't exist, right? So if you can't do what, what it changed to, it was two meters to start with and you had to social distance. And then we realized that we, we work and we neff it, we got them to understand that as hairdressers, we can't do that because we can't be two meters away from our client. So the rule now is it, it's recommended to be two meters, but if you can't do two meters, you have to make reasonable adjustments. Reasonable adjustments are, for example, you might have screens in between your basins. Uh, you might, uh, yeah. you might not. You, uh, you might have t taken some of the chairs out. Mine are all back in for Christmas. I have every section operating. Uh, my reasonable adjustments okay. are face masks, contact tracing, sterilization, and spreading it over more days. So I still don't have a waiting area. Uh, so people will have to wait outside or in the car. And that's just the way we're doing it in my salon. But remember, guys, you don't have to. It doesn't have to be two meters. That's a, that's a recommendation. Providing you make reasonable adjustments. And like I said, I'll say it again, reasonable adjustments can be a mask, sterilization and contact tracing. Um, we're still health and safety compliant. So managing the rush for Christmas. Yes, you can have people in your salon. Um, the, uh, and what Leo uh, Varadka very, very wisely pointed out, we've put the onus now on the client. If the client feels uncomfortable, if the client feels there's too many people in the salon, they don't have to stay. And he did say, mm -hmm. if you go into a shop and you feel it's too busy, you don't Please. have to stay. And that goes for our clients. I would suggest if they want to leave halfway through a service, they should, I don't know, it's, uh, what would your salon want to do? Would you want to charge them for it? Or that, that, that comes down to the individual salon. But we've done everything we can as an industry. I think we, we have to remember, we're kind of superheroes because we, on a daily basis, defy the odds and, and, and make the impossible happen in salons all across the country. And we did it mm -hmm. with COVID. We were absolutely amazing. And yes, some clients are still nervous, but we've done everything we can as an industry to put them at ease. And if they want to get up and leave because the salon's busy, um, I would say there'd be very few people doing that because they want the hair done for Christmas. 
And sorry, you mentioned there about, you know, the adjustments and you said face masks. Are you advocating now? I know that there is, the government has reminded us a couple of times that like really at this point in time, face masks are the way to go. And would you agree? Um, the, the, the legislation says face coverings. Yeah. So it's down to the individual. On a personal feeling, and this is just me, I don't like the visors. The reason being because they have a big gap here. And if you're studying up yeah. your client and you cough, it's just going to project it onto your client. That's just a personal thing. I know some people prefer, prefer visors. Um, I have read studies that say the face masks are better, but compliancy means wearing a face covering. That can be a visor or a mask. Uh, I know some in the beauty industry, some people are wearing both, uh, visors and masks. Yeah. But in our salon, we wear masks. And just a little tip that I noticed in my salon, our staff got a bit slack. And what they did was they were going into the staff room and taking the masks off. And that was a point where we had to readjust and remind them, hang on a minute, guys, you're, you, you know, you're, you're less than two meters apart and you're taking your mask down. If you want to do that, you have to go outside. And it was, yeah. it, it was just to keep kind of, and the reason I'm saying that is because if it happened in my salon, it quite possibly happened in other salons as well. People started to forget because it became, the new normal became the normal. So yeah. we started to take it for granted a little bit. So we have to this time, I've had to this time again, remind the staff a bit on, a, on a Zoom call about the correct hygiene procedures in the salon. And you might need to do a little five minute, 10 minute meeting on that. Maybe bring them in early on the first day and remind them remind them about contact tracing, remind them how to, how to do the sterilization, uh, remind them to keep their face masks on, remind them that they can't sit with each other or they're having lunches, uh, you know, sat right next to each other with masks on like they used to before. Because uh, they, uh, they, you know, there's a chance they forgot. We're, again, we're human and we're working with a lot of people that are, uh, uh, it's quite a young industry these days, I see. Um, there's still a few old, old ones like me in it but it's still quite it's, it's quite a young industry, which is great. But we do forget, and it might be no harm just to remind them. But I noticed um, we in our salon it didn't slip for the clients, but the the staff would kind of you know when somebody might have been making a coffee. We started serving coffee again in in paper cups, and you know things okay. things have changed a little bit. But um, again, that's going to be. Uh, down to individual salons but basically you just have to remember it's all about reasonable adjustments so that it that okay. the reasonable adjustments is your face masks your hygiene and your contract tracing. contract tracing is key because if you haven't kept proper records that's where you'll get into the biggest trouble yeah and i guess like um that was what i was going to say to you as well you know um that what are the like what what are the advantages of you know coming back after lockdown number two you know what what can people draw on say from what they learned the first time and a lot of a lot of it I suppose would be around things like contact tracing. Yeah, definitely keep keep your records. I mean, if 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 a case goes through your salon, they're going to want to see your records, and if you haven't got the records, there's possible fines. Um, what I would say as well, though, rebooking. I mean, we with every client that we had in after the last lockdown, we tried to rebook for them for at least the next two appointments. Okay. And we should be rebooking them for January and February, even if we don't know if we're going to be open or not. Um, okay. Rebook your clients. And my advice is what we did was we, we said, because of the restrictions... Um, we advise you to rebook because we can't, we, you know, we, we can't take as many clients as possible as normal. And because of the hygiene, you know, and everything, we advise you to rebook your next appointment. And people did it. I'd say 95% of our clients rebooked. And that's and have, you, have, you found, have you found as well, you know, since people came back, has there been like um, a bigger uptake in, you know, the retail products? Like, because I know that people have said to me, you know, that during the first lockdown and when people started coming back into the salon, there was a bit of a shift in terms of 
people were more um, into looking after their hair now, I, after I they think, had that, that whole period of no hair. I think what happened was that people, um, people did, don't get me wrong, our clients were quite resilient. They did a damn good job in lockdown. I'll give them that. But I think what that ha happened was once they got into the salon and they had their cut and their color and their treatment, they looked at the hair and felt the hair and thought, oh no, I, I need, I, this is different. And they remembered yeah. what professional service is like. And they, they remembered what customer services is like and professional retail is like. And people were more, I think also they did it to help us. They know that basically, I, I worked it out, we had 20 weeks off in lockdown, add on four weeks annual leave. That's almost half a year we've been closed. And clients yeah. wanted to spend money with us to try and keep us open. They were aware that, you know, that that's a big hit for a salon to take and they want to keep the salon local, uh, their local salons open. So rebooking would be the big thing that I, I would um, I would advocate. Communicating with your clients. If you've got a text message system, send them a text message um, telling them what you're doing, social media. Um, I, I'm not a, a, a big social media person. However, I've been using lockdown to communicate with my clients through social media, yeah. telling them what's going on in the salon, telling them what to expect. Um, I've made... Um, I've called it my um, my Christmas promise, and it's my promise to my clients that I will try my best to get them in uh, uh, on their on the date they want. Um, if not, I will I will you know try try my best to get them in on a different day. I will make the, their experience as pleasurable as possible. Blah blah blah. And it's like about six points, and at the end of it, we ask you in return to be patient and kind. Yeah. <laughs> and understanding yeah so yeah just to, to wrap up there so just um to recap really and um, the main things are to keep an eye out for a clarification on the date but not yeah. to worry too much about it it will be either the first or the second yeah. and then the other thing would be that's quite important would be um getting your staff to sign the back to work form yeah and then just plan your plan your back to work plan 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 and communicate with your clients and it's as simple as that we, guys, just on the last note, we did it before. Okay. As an industry, we're amazing. We perform miracles every day. And last time we came back to work and we nailed it. It's not going to be any yeah. different this time. In fact, it's going to be much nicer because it's Christmas. Exactly, yeah. Listen, thank you so much for joining us. And um, obviously, best of luck in your new role, which you will be uh, probably taking up anyway in the next few weeks. But uh, that kicks in on the 1st of January. So we'll definitely be talking to you again anyway. And um, it's far too early to say happy Christmas. Uh, so I'm just going to say best of luck on the 1st slash 2nd of, of December. Brilliant. Thank you, guys. Okay. And thank you Thanks for taking guys. this tune in. Bye, everyone. Keep an, our, keep an eye on our social media for uh, details of our next webinar, everybody. Uh, so until then, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again, Wayne. Bye, take care, bye, bye.